we're going to call this a bonus episode, I guess. But I think I did that on the 173 as well. But uh, this is going to be episode 174. This is According to Callus. And we're going to talk about CD3. Yes, that's Congressional District 3 in Texas. And for those of you that don't know, our current U.S. representative is none other than Van Taylor. Now, we all know Van. We've had him as a congressman for four years already. And uh, here's what he says he is. Problem is, is he compromises a lot. And that's upset a lot of people. So there is a concerted effort to take him out in the primary this time. Now, whether or not you think he deserves that, the interesting thing is, is we have four candidates, uh, one of whom is a former elected official himself, two uh, other candidates that felt morally obligated to get in and uh, replace Van, and then a fourth guy who really doesn't feel comfortable with anybody that is on that list that we're going to run down. So, and um, I've had the opportunity to meet and talk to all four of these individuals. I am not going to represent what they say or what they think, merely going to give a brief impression of my interactions with them and um, try and say something positive about each one of them. I really want you to do your own research. I think you need to know who these guys are. Uh, I think you have a debt that you owe yourself, much like in my own house district for Texas race. You need to do your own research. You need to know who these people are. You need to know what they represent, what they want to do, and kind of a little bit about them to see whether or not what they say matches up with what they do, which, again, is one of the complaints uh, lodged against Van Taylor. And I won't get into the matter as to whether or not I agree or disagree with that. Suffice it to say that's been covered, been there, done that. This is just a reflection of who it is that's running to potentially replace them. And again, they are vying to force a runoff so that one of them will stand a good chance to unseat Congressman Taylor. Now, the first up is going to be the guy that I've known the longest that I have an extremely high level of uh, respect for. And truth be told, I wanted him to run for Congress four years ago. And I told him so, and I encouraged him so. Unfortunately, for reasons I'm not privy to, it just didn't work out. But he's back, and that would be Keith Self. Now, as you may or may not know, he is the former county judge, which is basically the say the equivalent of being the mayor with some authority or a strong mayor system, maybe even, uh, at the county government, uh, which is suffice to say he has a, a county manager, but there's little plenary, plenary power there that might doesn't exist with some of the other mayoral positions. It's real funny how they set up Texas that uh, the progressive era is what designed most of the municipal governments in Texas, and yet... Most of Texas wants to reject progressivism as much as humanly possible, yet that is what we have, which has its own pluses and minuses. We're not here to debate that, only to say that the guy ran for election, the guy said he would reduce government, slow the growth of government, and reduce your tax rate, and he did all those things, and he kept his word, and he's a very... Uh, even keel, well thought out, well respected, de- deservedly so, uh, individual who has been there, done that, both in the military and serving our county. So, I, I th- talking about a guy that's been there, done that, and the guy that's going to be uh, steady Eddie, if you will, and very conservative for that matter, for for our county now that we've got two other counties in our congressional district that does mix things up just a little bit 
But if anything, it's going to skew it more to the right, I would think. So, I mean, this is a good thing. And, and, and I'm encouraged that we've got a guy that basically is coming out of retirement because he feels like he has to. You got to respect that. You really do. And I, look, you got to check out his military career. You got to check out his time as the county judge. And you've got a way. Is that what I want? And I'm not looking to endorse any of these people right now. I, I don't want to set that up. I'm just, I'm putting this out there. These are relatively positive things in the interactions that I have. And I want you to be able to pick on somebody that you think, oh yeah, that guy sounds pretty good or that lady sounds really good. I'm going to go check her out and check him out and see see what I think. Relatively, who's got the bigger strengths that I want to represent me? Who Who is more aligned with me philosophically? What Whatever it is, you owe it to yourself. Again, it is very rare for a congressional member to lose his race for re-election, particularly after redistricting where they all but make it a bulletproof seat for the party that designed it going forward. And that goes across the board, both at the state level and at the federal level. So the primary becomes even that much more important going forward. And hey, if you love Van Taylor, that's great. And you know what? Van Taylor has not been awful, in my opinion. He's done a lot of things that I'm questioned, a couple things I'm concerned. So this is not about beat up Van Taylor. This is merely just to give you a taste of the candidates that are running to unseat him. Okay, so the next up is Susan Harp. Now, I met her. I went to one of her meet and greets. Um, very smart lady, very capable, put together. Um, long time Allen resident, raised Five kids, I believe, in the area. She's done the homeschool, the private school, and the public school thing. She's moved around with her career to take care of her kids. And, you know, she did a good enough job that her son is the chief of staff for a newly elected congressional member. I'm sure that plays a part as to her desire to run for Congress herself in her home city. Um, But... In talking to her, she seems very capable, very put together, um, very proud of the fact that, you know, one side of her family has been here for nearly ever. And the other side was a Greek immigrant who fled communism. And, you know, that's that's one of the things that I always keep in mind. Somebody that's fled communism or their family has, they have a much sharper eye out for what's going on around us. I mean, the average American turns a blind eye to every bit of the creeping socialism or progressivism that's coming upon us. And they, oh, well, you know, it's not that big a deal. I'm not really, but the people that live through it or escape from it, oh man, they're, they're, th- they're the ones that are telling you, what are you thinking? Are you crazy? Don't do this. I mean, perhaps we should pay a little more attention to them. I'm just saying. So again, uh, this lady felt morally obligated to get in because she felt let down by, by Van Taylor. She uh, has mentioned multiple times that the uh, certification of the election and the January 6th investigation votes were crossing a bridge or burning a bridge, perhaps. They couldn't be, could not be overcome. It was too much. And so she's in and very, you know, Both her and Keith have run very good, capable campaigns as far as I can tell. Um, And again, somebody should check out if it interests you, if that's what you want. I mean, again, all the candidates agree that Van Taylor let us down on the January 6th commission and the um, certification of the election. And they, they all cite that as one of the primary reasons why they're in the race. Okay, so we're going to go on to the next one. Next up is Dr. Ricky Williams. However, if you refer to him doctor, he will quickly correct you and say, just call me Ricky. So, Mr. Williams, again, I've met him. I've done a couple of meetings where he's been around. I've had a couple conversations with him. Um, I don't think I've actually been to a meet and greet, but I did get to sit down and have about an hour conversation with him and some other people. So, I guess that maybe counts as a meet and greet. The guy's got a top-notch education 
He has worked everywhere in the school system from being a bus driver to being the, oh, I'm going to get this wrong, vice director of Region 10, which I think is the second or third largest region in the state of Texas. But along the way, he's done coach, teacher, superintendent, and principal. So now you got to give kudos to a guy that survived the government school system and came out a hardcore Republican, a guy that was willing to put aside whatever political differences that he had to work with people that um, probably weren't on the same team, if you will, for the greater good, which is supposed to be educating the next generation. And a guy that survives in something like that, he's been tested. He knows what it's like to work with people that don't like him. And he's gotten stuff done and he's managed to get promoted despite his uh, political leanings. Again, that's a major kudo to a guy that can pull that off. And again, rehashing this, he's in because Van Taylor let him down, right? Again, the January 6th commission and the certification of the election. And he just feels like, look, Van moved his family to D.C. He's not, or I'm sorry, Virginia. He's not interested in representing CD3 anymore. He he doesn't live in Collin County. Now, I know this is not an uncommon thing with house reps. And I think that that's something that we overlook, you know. When we hire somebody to represent us in D.C., we expect them to come home. We expect them to still be in the district and their families there. So they have a vested interest in what happens back home in Texas. I think it's a very valid point, something you ought to consider. And what is the likelihood that the next rep might move out there, too? I I think that's fair game um, uh, as far as a question or at least something that you're willing to weigh in on. And. I think you have to also accept the answer that you're given, whether you like it or not. Because I believe that uh, particularly the person that uh, Ricky was concerned about, I think you'd get an honest answer out of him. Um, and I, I've i had conversations with um, people that support uh, actually all three of the ones I've gone through thus far. And um, they're pretty adamant that their person's the person. Now we're going to throw in the guy that I just have a special part of my heart set aside for, Jeremy Ivanowski. And if I butchered your last name, Jeremy, that was not intentional. Listen, I I met the guy months ago and we were fretting on what happened with CD3, with what happened with Van Taylor, you know, letting us down, right? It's common occurrence in Republican circles and it's, you know, it's a fair question. Does it count that the guy votes two, three times against what your wishes are? And the retort is, well, does it count if my wife cheats on me three times? Well, I don't know that they're exactly equivalent, but if those specific votes are equivalent to you, then now you got a problem. You got to decide. Does he stay or does he go? And, Jeremy's in the race. I He is, I guess, not happy with the options we have. I, I guess that'd be a fair way to say it. The man knows his stuff. He laid down, you know, quoting from the USC or United States Code, not the college. Uh, he pointed out a, s- several constitutional um, pieces of... Um, appropriate uh, quotations, if you will. He, were, In other words, he was citing the section from the clause, from the article. The guy knows his stuff, and he came to, ready to do battle. Now, I got to say, he was a little jumpy, a little on edge when he started in the debate, but by the time the debate got to the end, he was doing much better, and he was able to articulate what it was that concerned him most. And one of the things that he brought to the table was his focus on, hey, the federal government doesn't actually have the authority to do a good number of these things. 
the federal government's wrong and we need to rein in the federal government. Now, for me, that was quite refreshing. And truth be told, and I know this from speaking with Jeremy is a Ron Paul guy. And as some of you may have recalled, I too am a big fan of the great Dr. Ron Paul. So again, this is why I've got that little piece of my heart. It's just, oh, I can't believe this guy's doing this. This is awesome. But if we're honest, he's got the toughest road to hoe. As far as I know, he's self-funding. As far as I know, he has no team. But I want to encourage him, if he should happen to hear this, please show up to every debate in every form. State your case. Rely on the Constitution. Stand firm. The other candidates, they will acknowledge what you say, and they will have to address it because you're bringing it. You're bringing it. Now, back to... The guy's got a regular full-time job. He had a job in law enforcement. He, he's, again, one of these guys that's kind of been there, done that, done different things, and got to respect a guy that's willing to basically put his life on hold on something that he really doesn't have a high probability of having any uh, win out of this. But he feels it's so important that he's willing to do that. And major kudos and respect to that. I mean, so... We are blessed in Collin County. We're blessed in CD3. We have four good candidates. And by good, I mean they each have their strengths. And they're all running against a guy that they think let us down. That they're not happy with. That takes a lot of time, money, and effort. What I'm asking of you is take the time and the effort to learn which candidate better suits you. Which candidate is most akin with either what you agree with or what you think or what your philosophy is. Not only that, you may want to consider, do they have a good chance to win? I mean, that's a fair question to ask. We're going to, best case scenario, we get a runoff, right? If you don't like Van, your best case scenario is your runoff. So you're playing for who's going to get second place. Now, maybe you're okay that you think the guy will get second place or by enough people voting for two or the three of the opponents, you can pull that runoff and then just roll the dice on whether or not your guy or your second or third choice gets in. Yeah, you can do that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But what I would suggest is that should factor in when you do your research, you should consider, okay, playing for second place here. And my guy's legitimately going to be in third place. Well, who can I live with? Who Who is the person that... I mean, it's got to factor in. It's not fair. It, it's not fun. You're probably not doing your candidate of choice any favors. But if you don't have a vested interest, and you're not working somebody's campaign, and you're not endorsing somebody, take the time. Know where these people stand. Know if, hey, you know what? That guy's worth my vote. Or, you know what, that lady really impresses me. I want her to run against Van. If you can come to that conclusion with any of these candidates. Now, keep in mind, every one of these candidates, every vote for them is one less for Van. And if that's what your goal is, then that's what you should do. Now, I I feel it's only fair I haven't made a decision. I'm not going, I'm I don't See an endorsement coming. Boy, if they get a runoff, (laughs) then I'll endorse. But right now, look, I don't have to like it, but Van Taylor is our congressman. And overall, he's not been terrible. So do I really want to poke that bear? Well, yeah, I already did. So (laughs) there you go. I answered your question. So what I would encourage you is if you're like me and you're disappointed, you're disaffected, you're believing that Van's been disingenuous, you know, part of that problem solver caucus, selling us out a little bit at a time, doing the best conservative surrender that you can, then you need to look at which one of these four is going to best represent you and which one of these four do you think Mealy has the best chance at being number two? And yeah, I just realized what I said. Coming in second place. So again, 
This all factors in. Make your educated decision. And when you do, stick by your guns. For me, I just want to see if we can get the runoff. At this point, it doesn't matter to me. Either one of these people I'd be thrilled to death to have in a runoff. And when we get there, oh, we're going to have lots of fun. Well, friends, this is the uh, extra episode, if you will. It's going to come out on Wednesday. And, uh, well, if you're listening, you probably know it's already Wednesday. But for those of you in the future, this is coming out January 26th, 2022. This is episode 144 that is ending. This was about CD3. This is According to Callus, and I will see you on the other side.